Start your day. It's five minutes after nine. So Spice FM has an AI and our algorithm is called Abin. Yes, he is. Mm. And he's looking out for you today mm. in a good way because he's got 3,000 shillings this uh, um, morning Morning. Yes. to give to you. <laughs> what you need to do mm. to order to get Avin's 3,000 bob is dial star 544 hash. Mm -hmm. Now, when you do that, you'll find that option number four is for go monthly mm -hmm. and you send that to the system it's going to give you many options and you will select the all-in-one mm -hmm. now the all-in-one has different options you're going to spend a particular amount of money and you get different options in terms of what happens with talk time let's say you pick the one for two thousand shillings eh? mm. two thousand shillings will give you a thousand shillings a thousand minutes of talk time mm. it'll give you two thousand sms's it'll give you 17 gb data and it'll give you free whatsapp mm. for a month for 30 days you can have this at your your for your use mm. all right and so why because you know what the days of talking on the phone sending messages it will not go because you do not have airtime or trying to get online and you do not have bundles mm -mm, that's over safaricom says let's get into another era shall we uh use a little bit of money at the beginning or a lot of money at the mm. beginning of the month whatever it may be mm. middle of the month buy talk browse communicate and forget about it now if you live do that today, your life Peace of, yes, peace of mind. Yes, peace of mind. That's what you're buying. You're buying peace of mind. AI is giving you 3K. AI will give you 3K if you do that. Send it. Not that everybody who does will send it. He will use the algorithm mm, to, to check and pick a winner. Very good. Very good. Now, there are many places you have visited in this country and there are places you haven't visited. Have you been to Cherangani? Have I been to Cherangani? No, I have not. Uh -huh, you've heard of it? I have. The Cherangani Hills. I've heard of them. Uh -huh. uh, do you know which county it is in? Hold on. No. Hmm? <laughs> I should. Uh, somebody who was an MP for this area in the 90s is our guest. Okay. okay. He was a member of parliament. In those days, when the opposition MPs, he was among those in the opposition. Then, when uh, NAC formed government, he was in government. He was a minister in charge of food security, agriculture mm -hmm. in this country. And so on and so forth. Nowadays, he's an elder. Mm. He sits, he looks, <laughs> and he says, I see the sun rising from the east. Oh, wow. <laughs> and by my, by end of day today, it shall rain. And it rains. <laughs> Kipruto Arab Kiro, good morning. Good morning to you, sir. How are you doing? <laughs> Salama kabisa. Good to have you here again. Yeah, I thank God for it. Mm. Yes, and actually I was in the 80s, the 90s, and, the two, and up to 2007. You see? I sat for 20 years. Me, it's it's bugging me. me. Huh? It's bugging me and I don't want to go. Uh, um, My county is trying oh, yeah. Ka Kitale. Yeah, Kitale. <laughs> He's well our district headquarters. <laughs> well done. But well, what is the name of the county? Transoya. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's a first land. <laughs> She's a first land. Very well. Very, very good. So, Transoya County, Cherangani Hills. Yes. Karibu sana here. I thank God. We want to talk about, you know, you've been in politics for long. You served in parliament, you served in cabinet, you have sat at the executive, you have looked at this, you have, in fact, you've even chaired and led a political party. Yeah. And that political party ended up being the, the ruling political party with you outside. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're looking at your former ruling pa your former party yes. now as a ruling party, yes. and we are seeing fractures at the very top. That's true. We'll discuss that. Excellent. City has said hi to you, City Muga, oh, but he's oh, not how in is he? We don't know. With the proverbs. We told the guy, you go <laughs> and rest, because he said, <laughs> I want to go and rest. Uh -huh. So the one thing that we're not doing is not disturbing him. Oh, wonderful. But he left us with the proverbs. Mm -hmm. And he told us for this week, the proverbs will be from Senegal. Ah, Senegal. Yeah. So listen to the proverb and give us your interpretation. Three kinds of people die poor. Those who divorce those who incur debt and those who move around too much <laughs> three kinds of people die poor those who divorce those who incur debt and those who move around too much aka tanga tanga <laughs> <laughs> eric i don't know i don't know whether i will have the right interpretation there is no wrong interpretation <sighs> Okay. Yes. I, I think the, the hallmark of the statement is that you should be careful about what you do. Uh, because at the end of the day, a divorce is not desirable, but at times it has to happen. Mm. I thank God I'm not in that category. Mm. I still got my wife. Mm. 
uh, for many years. Mm -hmm. And uh, we incurred debt almost every afternoon, mm. whether it's Fulisa, I'm sure. Mm, something. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, th well, the third one is uh, Tanga Tanga. Mm. Of course, if you are aimless, you, you are not careful about what you're doing, then you will die poor. Mm. Yeah, you must be careful about what you're doing. So it's like choices of consequences. That's it. And you should be prepared for the consequences. For the consequences. Mm -hmm. Once you engage in a certain activity, mm -hmm. you must be ready for the full hog. Mm. Yeah. You know, in the previous hour, we had uh, Senator Chararge here, of course, you know that. Yes, Senator and Fonandi. Fonandi. Yes. And um, one of the things that he said is yeah. what he's seeing now happening, he called it unfortunate, uncalled for, and he used very many other words. <laughs> you know, uh, people are just perambulating and speaking, and it has no weight. It's politics out there. There's a lot of work to be done. It's not being done. Mm -hmm. um, and this is with regards, of course, to the politics around you know, the president, the deputy president, members of the national executive and in the legislature from the ruling coalition, Kenya Kwanza, and their friends now who are in ODM. Mm -hmm. What do you make of what's happening in the country right now? Well, I say political bad manners because some of these things we saw it coming. Part of the reason why I left UDA mm. is because I believed, I've done a bit of industrial psychology, the two characters, the president and the current deputy president, are people whose character cannot be compatible for such a long time. I remember I told the president and a, a battery of other guys who were around the president at that time, mm. because we had four candidates, and uh, Rigathi Gashago was one of them. And I told them, you'll not last with him for five years, mm. because the two of them are too combative. And you know, even in a family, I thank God you talked about divorce. In a family, it's not because we are good. Perhaps for my family, my wife is more tolerant than I am. Mm. And therefore, we've been managed to stay for almost close to 40 years mm. together. In a family, there must be somebody who is more tolerant, somebody who is more understanding. So that when you have a hyper husband, mm. the, the wife must be tolerant, very calm, and, 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 and vice versa. Mm. That's how families survive. And of course, political conveniences that we have will of necessity mean one must be able to be tolerant. Mm. You remember the only person who has kept his uh, vice or deputies well is Kibaki, because Kibaki was very tolerant. Mm. That's why the three vice presidents that he had, none of them complained much about Kibaki. And Kibaki respected the institution, even including us ministers. Mm. If other people, I remember there was a case of somebody, some ministers, wanted to transfer a coffee board from a ministry. Mm. So at the full length of time, he asked them, but where is the guy who is responsible for this particular ministry? I was called at 9 o'clock. The following day, I went to State House, and uh, I did not have a problem. I told him, the only thing that we need to do is to amend the law. Mm. Then he said, why are we amending the law? If it is in this ministry, it's the same government. If it moves... We have better things to do rather than to take the legislation to parliament mm. to transfer a parastatal. That is Kibaki for you. But many people don't respect people they work with. Now, the three of you having been here for long, mm. I, you, I give you a lot of credit because people cannot tolerate each other. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So that is our problem. You saw this? I saw this and that is the reason I left. Are you saying others did not see it? I don't know. There could have been conveniences. I'm a kuna madeni. I don't know. Because, you see, I told them, yes, he can play another role because I respect him. I respect him, but I will advise him down the road mm. um, about the way I see politics today. I saw that he was not going to last. That relationship was not going to last. Kindiki, Aliswaome, or Muturi could have done better. That's my opinion, mm. because they would be willing to listen to the boss. Because you see, Ruta is also a micromanager mm. and too domineering. Regade is also combative. So when you combine the two, they tell us in industrial psychology, that is totally incompatible pair. Usually, by the time somebody uh, outside whatever little caucus or circle you are in is telling you something, usually you have an idea about that same truth. Yes. So the likelihood of both of those parties being aware of what could happen down the road is pretty high. Mm -hmm. Why would they still decide to make that decision if they knew there was a possibility that they could split ways down the road? Why? 
I do not know. Possibly they were hoping. Because even the president you had in Kasarani, I didn't say that. He said himself that he's not going to treat the his deputy the way he was treated. Mm. But perhaps it took more than five years for Uru to tolerate uh, William Ruto. Mm. Uh, but the, this situation has become intolerable after one year. In fact, what we are seeing now is a pep epitome of what has been happening. Mm. Lack of political hygiene. This political hygiene, if we were to define it, because we are talking about okay, people, individual characters, and a job that needs to be done to serve the public. Mm -hmm. And the president has actually recently used this term, servant leadership. You are in this position mm -hmm. to serve the people. Mm -hmm. You have been given the honor mm -hmm. by the people of Kenya to serve them. Mm -hmm. So it's not about you. Yeah, it's not true. even about your boss. That's it's not true. about your subordinate. Yeah. It is about the people. Yes. So why would we end up having... The problem, you see, there is what we call a habit. When it is repeated by the same individual, it becomes a character. And when there are more characters behaving the same way, it becomes a sort of a social uh, challenge. And if there are more people in that kind of uh, social uh, arrangement, it becomes a, a subculture. And likewise, it will grow into a culture. So the culture that we've grown in Kenya for the last uh, 60 years is that we do not respect the people who elect us. Immediately they elect you, you think you are the boss. Mm. You forget that they elected you because there were certain aspirations they had, certain hopes. And those hopes you dash them by behaving in the opposite way uh, from what they expected you to do. So that is that is it's become our culture. Mm. It is not it is not it is not just William Ruto and Ricardo Gashagua. If we don't watch, any other arrangement may almost precipitate the same. That's why we as ordinary citizens, we must rise with the occasion mm. and say no. Mm. Mm. Yeah. No to impeachment, no to all these bad manners. You know, mm. the president when he was deputy. Mm -hmm. You know, those days he was asked the question, what would you do to make sure that your deputy does not face the same kind of thing that you face? And of course, you've seen, you know, clips have emerged in an interview with Joe Ageo, him saying mm -hmm. that can never happen. Mm -hmm. During the presidential debate, Yvonne Okora and I asked him the same question. I mean, you're saying that you have gone through all these things, but you've been in office. Mm -hmm. Would you do the same? And he said, no, we wouldn't. Mm -hmm. What we fell short of is asking him, what needs to happen to control a president so that a president does not mistreat a deputy president? Go off the rails. All right? Mm -hmm. So what is it? Do, do you think we need legislation? What do we need to do to <laughs> infuse uh, this thing that we are now calling political hygiene? I think the most important thing is that we must think about our society itself. Mm -hmm. Because I'm sure even today as we are here, the country is polarized. Mm -hmm. There are those who believe the deputy president is right. And there are those who believe the president is right. And therefore, the deputy must, of necessity, be impeached. Mm -hmm. So it is it is become more of a culture. Uh, I, I run the risk of repeating what I've said before. That upon taking over Tanganyika, Mwali mm. Nyerere, six weeks later on, he, he resigned to tour the country, to inculcate in them the values of a nation what it means to be a Tanganyikan. After one year, he came back and he, he became the president of Tanzania. He, he allowed Rashid Kawawa to take over for one year. Mm. And later on, he put in school curriculum to inculcate the values of being a Tanzanian. And that is how that country is. Today, they may be lower in terms of GDP than us. But because of that unity and good manners, they are likely to do better in the next 10 years. Mm. Because we are spending a lot of resources in fighting. Listening to the deputy president uh, last week, mm. I, would, I realized that there is something that we are not seeing. The government is frustrating itself from performing. Because there are certain activities he was given to do under uh, Gazette notice that the president himself signed. Later on, mm -hmm. those activities were frustrated despite the fact that we spent billions of shillings in that particular department. That is something that is worrying me. So, also, the last mm -hmm. term of the two, Uru and Ruto, they wasted a lot of time in fighting.
and in the process they frustrate the public and the resources and the resources because there was there was resources that were spent in the yeah. office of the deputy president yes. who was ineffective yeah in delivering any job yeah. getting any job done yeah. hmm. when we look at i mean coming from your position yeah. you served in government um still i mean a political honcho even till now and we still have to ask the question really down the line after several several you know years of administration of government that there still cannot be a clear distinction between service delivery and politics and i think i have to ask the question then when people go into these positions is it really for the good and the development and the progression of the country because if it is not from the get go there is no way you can ask somewhere down the line for somebody to please change their intent that's true if their intent from the very beginning was to see what they could garner for themselves or some kind of search for political expediency there is no way we're going to ask please change your proverbial political spots somehow in the middle of the game so it seems as though we are dealing with quite a number of people whose intent was never for economic developmental progression of Kenya yeah we go back to the same society because today if you found me driving a bits you will say this guy was a minister mm -hmm. and is driving a bits or if you found me in a taxi because our society has almost prescribed that once you get into a position of privilege you must display certain level of acquisition that is beyond your capacity mm -hmm. But in other societies, people are proud of the legacy that you leave, and at times spend a bit of time listening to some of the stories emanating from Tanzania. They seem to respect people who served the country with distinction, mm. as we seem to respect people whose time in office they were able to acquire something they are totally incapable of acquiring in another arrangement. This therefore means when somebody gets into politics, he's not getting to politics to serve. Mm. Mm -hmm. He's getting to politics to have primitive accumulation of wealth to the extent that at the end of the day, they are respected for doing so. Today, if you want to Rift Valley, and I can say this without any fear of contradiction, mm. the backyard of President William Ruto, you can accuse him of Adani, mm. or G to G, any other accusation, but they will not take it. They say he knows. He ni siyasa unaleta. He unaleta siyasa. Na anajua kutafuta mali. Mm. Yeah. So you cannot accuse him of corruption. Accuse him of anything else. But not corruption. So is it, is it the people? It's the people. We are, we are the problem. We the people are the problem. We don't seem to see anything wrong. When one of our own is doing the wrong thing, as long as we'll partake part of the loot that he has gotten from national coffers. Today, up to today, we are divorced, alienated from the government. We don't believe the government is part of our, uh, of our heritage. We still look at the government as another animal, alienated from our own daily life. So if you are looting from the government, you are doing well. Because you, know, you are not stealing from us. Um, <laughs> the recent demonstrations showed that the people actually know and they don't like what's happening. They acknowledge the oppression they don't like. It was started, yes, by mm -hmm. the younger generation, mm -hmm. but it got widespread support. Yes. It says that people, people, were, people were expressing themselves and saying, you know what, we have just been tolerating. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have been sitting back and tolerating and hoping that, you know what, you guys will change. We've been, we've been giving you these signals once in a while. We, you go into parliament, we vote you out, we bring in somebody else because we are thinking you, have, you are behaving the other way. And now this one voice was saying enough is enough. They were saying this opulence that you're showing, no. They were saying this, you know, uh, wanton theft of public resources or misappropriation of public resources and a lack of service delivery, no. If you look at even the conversations that are continuing now, a raised level of accountability, people are saying no. So people are aware. People are aware, but we have not sufficiently owned the process. Yeah. We are still almost like, um, what do I say? Uh, passive participants, some, some, some of the people in this country. Mm. Uh, the GNCs, and I hope when they get to time that they get into certain offices, and I pray sooner than later, 
they will be able to keep up with what they did for the last uh, on the 25th of, uh, of I think 25th of June yes mm. and there about mm. because it was a departure from the past it was non-tribal uh, non-class you know they didn't have that we come from this place we come from Kayole we come from Karen mm. we come from Runda mm. for them it was that this is enough Kimani Shung was so class Yeah. Kimani Ishung was so clear. He used to see oh, their no. KFC. Kimani, <laughs> and, yeah. Kimani Ishung was his things I don't see. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Possibly smarter than me. All right, go on. <laughs> on a light note. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. They, were, they came out and yeah. they were united. They were representing a cross-section of Kenyan society. That's true. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> and they're also representing, yeah, the Kenyan society. Mm. They didn't see tribe. They saw themselves as Kenyans. Yeah who deserve better than what the government is giving them. Mm. Yeah. And that should be the way. We hope it will actually be ingrained mm. in our in in our blood. Mm. So that we say no no no. Because you see like uh, what we talk about private public participation the whole problem is lack of management. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you are to improve management of uh, public resources there are enough people to buy into this and you can sell whatever you want to sell to the public as long as they trust that the management is right how do people and i think we continue to ask this question because we come from a place where it's obvious that there has to be citizen centric governance mm-hmm. and even if you're not the ones you know putting your signature that it has to be with the citizen in mind that these decisions or these actions are taken and made mm-hmm. But how do people I mean we do like you said you have some citizens who are very very you know plugged in people will work in their community people will take matters to court people will look for judgments um in areas of jurisdiction that they see things are going wrong people will but would seem as though the majority of people you know we just kind of sit back and hope that things will get better and we talk and we complain and we say that things don't work right but how do we actually get involved And I'm going to come back to your example when you were uh, as a minister do you ex- did you expect that Kenyans would speak up and say no we cannot go in this direction or was the general thinking that yeah, okay they'll make noise for a few days but then after that they'll keep quiet Yeah at times when you're inside you don't know what is happening outside Sincerely when we are the ministry perhaps at times you have a lot of information and you think you are doing well only for the public to say no and of course i had a share of my own uh, uh, failures and successes mm. so uh, as a minister yes uh, at times you think the public is wrong but in the overall you realize the public was right because at times there is disinformation at times there is propaganda and at times there is some lack of information and of course it is your duty if you are a minister and people don't know exactly what you are doing it is your duty to tell them exactly what is happening and why certain things are happening in that particular manner but um yes the president admitted that there was a lack of effective communication mm-hmm. but it was not just lack of effective communication corruption is there and he, he admits there is corruption in government mm-hmm. uh of course display of opulence uh, lagis and uh, a bit of a measure of arrogance mm. was very evident and uh, i thank god the gnc is actually were able to teach them how mm. to behave some of them actually were no longer flying the flags before they were sacked because they realized the country was um, at crossroads mm. and it was the, it, the country was outraged by their behavior but what i still believe is lacking is um, a clear demonstration when you talk of public participation we need to redefine public participation mm. in a way that the public is actually engaged in a more meaningful way than is the case today mm. you know this is a constitutional requirement that was not there during our tenure but this uh, constitutional requirement does not seem to be respected the way it ought to be respected including some of the issues that you know mm-hmm. are around the table. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Why do you think it's not being respected? Do you think it's the status quo resisting change? It, it, it is 
it is actually from the for, from the system itself mm. and um, with the risk of looking like uh, some bitterness with the president mm. Mm. He, he is the person responsible in what we call change behavior uh, or behavioral change it 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 translates better when it starts from the top uh, when the top is right the rest of it will realign itself with the top mm. yeah, and that's why uh, during kibaki one people arrested policemen for almost uh, soliciting for a bribe yeah because they knew kibaki was no nonsense person mm. but the current situation is that if you are not gifted in going around the corners and getting one does not belong to you from the public coffers then you are not respected <laughs> remember 15 cases that were dropped yep. just because there was a new regime mm. as if those cases were sort of engineered politically from the previous regime mm -hmm. what happened to those cases they were all dropped yeah, we were told they had been engineered. Well, <laughs> <laughs> politically, engineered. politically engineered in the first place, and that's where and they Then you take somebody to KRA yeah. who had a case with KRA of 17 billion. Mm. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Half past nine, let's take this break. Kiputu Arapkiro is currently a governance expert. He has been a minister, he's been a member of parliament for many years, representing Chirangani constituency, and now he looks at things from a vantage position and says, okay. <laughs> With the benefit of experience, I can see and I can interpret some of those things yes. that are happening. We are asking him to interpret for us what is happening in this country, political hygiene, yeah. how do we achieve it as a people. Yeah. This 